Over the years, those who have worried and worked on uh, the strategic nuclear relationship between the superpowers and those who worry about nuclear proliferation horizontally were largely separate communities. Since the end of the Cold War, these two communities have overlapped more and more. Never before have these two sets of issues, that is the nuclear relationship between the US and Russia and global proliferation come together as they do today. At the cost of less than two-tenths of one percent of the annual defense budget, the non program has facilitated the destruction of 423 ballistic missiles, 383 ballistic missile launchers, 85 bombers, 483 long-range nuclear air-launched cruise missiles, 352 submarine missile launchers, 209 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and 19 strategic missile submarines. It also has sealed 194 nuclear test tunnels, and most notably 5,504 warheads that were on strategic systems aimed at the United States have been deactivated. To put this into perspective, Mount Luger has dismantled more nuclear weaponry than the countries of Great Britain, France, and China currently possess in their stockpiles and arsenals combined. Not only has the program made important contributions to our security, it's provided a diplomatic basis for a continuing relationship with Russia. Even during moments of greatest tension, Mount Luger has continued the important work in many ways, the program has represented the cornerstone, at times almost the totality, of the U.S.-Russian relationship at low points. It has given expression to a, an area of cooperation where only competition might have existed were it not for the common goal of dismantling the weapons of the Cold War. Now, despite tremendous progress, the real prospects for additional contribution in the future of cooperative threat reduction, there are areas that require additional attention and support. And in my opinion, chemical weapons elimination in Russia is at the top of this list. In December, I visited the Russian facility there and toured the site of the proposed non longer destruction facility. Located nearly a thousand miles from Moscow, it is home to a staggering two million chemical artillery shells and warheads. A Russian major and I demonstrated the proliferation threat posed by these weapons by easily filling, uh, fitting rather, an 85 millimeter shell filled with VX into an ordinary briefcase. Room was available for at least two more shelves. One briefcase alone could carry enough agent to kill thousands of Americans. Here we do have problems, primarily due to the fact that we have a large number of chemical weapons accumulated in the country. It is clearly time to utilize the window of opportunity to destroy these dangerous weapons. It is imperative for Americans, Russians, and the world that Russia's vast stores of chemical weapons do not end up in the hands of rogue nations or terrorists. Russia has over a thousand metric tons of highly enriched uranium, as all of you know, plus 150 metric tons of plutonium. I'm told that's enough to make 42,000 nuclear weapons. And that's a lot of material to protect. Any one of the terrorist groups with the technical know-how and nuclear materials so abundant in Russia could build a nuclear weapon small enough to fit inside the van that was parked in the World Trade Center and powerful enough to destroy all of Lower Manhattan. At the end of last year, a bipartisan task force headed by former Senator and Republican leader Howard Baker and former Democratic White House counsel Lloyd Cutler called the threat of loose materials, 
quote, the most urgent unmet national security threat to the United States. After several months opportunity to review the report and its recommendation of a 300% increase in funds to fight proliferation, the Bush administration instead cut funding by 15%. On top of that, one official now involved in the administration's review of its non-proliferation programs has told a reporter more cuts should be expected. These programs are tremendously beneficial to their national security and ours, and they are expensive, but they are worth it. We need a much greater effort rather than budget cuts. As Howard Baker and Lloyd Cutler made clear in testimony before my committee, the last thing we want is for Russia to become the world's shopping center for sensitive materials. Combating proliferation of nuclear weapons is a major venue for cooperation between Russia, the United States, and other countries. Our interests here coincide. That gives us unprecedented venues for international cooperation.